We're heading out to the beehives today for an inspection and also I believe there are several hives that have a full box of honey, which means that we're gonna be able to take a whole box of honey off. All right, we got our smoker going and we have some boxes and this really cool little contraption, at least I think it's cool. I bought it online. It's a uh, bee evacuation board or maybe some other name, I'm not sure. But the, the principle, the concept is that you place it between a box that you want empty and your hive. And the bees get through here, they can get out but not in very easily. So after a day, you're going to have fewer bees in that top box. Alright, we're all set here. We're going to open the nukes while we're here. Just to see how they're doing how the, the bees are progressing. You know, in my previous videos, I did uh, one hive that was split into three, and we have two nukes and one medium box that are now three different hives. So we're gonna check those out before we get started. Hopefully there's lots of bees. Oh, that looked nice. Not bad, not bad. They still have some empty space. We'll just pull one frame out here. They still have plenty of empty space. So I'm not in a great big hurry to get them moved, but they appear to be doing well, so that's good. That's good. I'm not gonna mess with them a whole lot. Shake the bees off the lid so I don't kill them when I put the lid on. Oh, that one looks even better. All right, I'm not even gonna mess with them. Plenty of empty comb, so I'm not gonna mess with the uh, pulling any frames out. I'm just gonna let them do their business. And we're just gonna peek in that, the one on the bottom. So let me move these new boxes. If you remember from a previous video, I lifted this up from the handles and forgetting that the bottom board is not attached. So we're gonna have to make sure we lift from the bottom board. They're getting heavy. That's a good thing. That means there's plenty of bees and plenty of honey. Plenty of comb. I need some more oil. The lid is child proof. It's hard to get into. Daddy curbs proof. I'm not digging in. Looks like they're doing fine. That's really all I wanted to see. We're gonna move on to our uh, other purpose, which is to check on these other hives. We're gonna check on hive two first. Yeah, we got, a, we got a beetle problem in all of these hives. I can see beetles running. And there's not a lot of activity. I'm, this makes me nervous. They are building in that one, but I'm concerned what's down below. I don't see any, I don't see any hive beetle uh, distress, meaning the, the slimy gunk learned my lesson on that one that the the high beetles cause the slimy gunk and the wax moths have the webbing oh jeez that one is heavy i think there's some uh, frame stuck to it oh, nope. Oh yeah, that was my problem right there. Is they they built the the comb connected to the frames below with honey, and I couldn't get through it. I couldn't I couldn't pull it up. You can see the the oil trap here. It does have some beetles in it. Would tell me that they don't really this upper box, and because of the hive beetles. We don't want to give them so much space that they can't manage that real estate. Yeah, these outside frames are completely empty. See that? There's just a little bit of drawn comb. Drawn out, meaning that they, they, they made comb on this path. 
pattern, but it's mostly empty. So I'm actually going to take this box that we gave them before, or the one below actually, I'm going to take that one out. They're not having a good time right now. There is brood. Can you see that? See that pattern? And there's some brood, uh, cap brood, which means babies that have caps over them. Lots and lots of honey. A little bit of a brood nest up into the second box. You can see some brood on this one. There's a lot of it actually. The queen is a good queen. She's laying in a good pattern and not leaving a lot of empty cells. And I'm totally ruining their day. I'm gonna put this one back. I don't have a goal to collect a lot of honey off of this hive this year. I just my main goal for this hive is to get it through the winter so that we can start next year putting the oil trap back to hopefully catch some of those beetles. This box right here has some bees in it and a little tiny bit of honey, but it is mostly empty, so we're gonna take that one off because I don't want this hive to have too much room. All right, let's go check out hive four, five, and six. Except for my beetle problem, which I hope to get under control, I feel like everything's going pretty well. Okay, hive number four, just, just by the outside observation there's not very many bees coming in and out what I'm hoping is that means that they're just all out foraging and not that the hives in trouble they have lots of honey on top I can see it actually there's still there's still quite a bit of empty on top here so you know one of the things that I have feared for these two hives because they've been doing so well for so long is that they might be doing so well that they uh, they run out of room and they swarm up and leave that's a very real uh, concern so the fact that I don't see a whole lot of bees right here makes me think that maybe their numbers have dwindled because maybe they swarmed I don't see a lot of bees <laughs> I think we might be taking this box off, taking it to the house. I'm going to go ahead and walk it over to the cart. Getting down into the bottom of this where we can, there's there's two boxes right now. There's the, 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 the deep box, which is typically the brood box, and one chamber above that, which uh, could also include some brood. It's all honey and pollen. You see the these down here in the bottom that have uh, different color yellows and whites in the bottom of it that's pollen stores lots of pollen and honey not a lot of brood I don't see any brood at all in this second chamber this box that came off the top has a lot of empty comb it's drawn comb but it's empty you can see there's there's wax uh, built up in the shape of the the comb that they build but there's nothing in it so what I'm gonna do for this hive because the numbers are low there's just not enough bees. Let me check down in that bottom box first. Okay, this is brood right here. This is a pattern of baby bees. You can see some of it there with the white. That's a, that's a maturing larva. And the rest of those capped, those are have larvae that are growing up and they're gonna pop out of those and be full-size bees. You can see some a little better on that one. I'm just curious, if they did swarm up, we would see some queen cells, lots of larvae there. You can see the, the white larvae inside those frames, inside those uh, cells. Right there's a queen cell, right on the bottom. And there's one on this side and that one has a larva in it, so that might be a developing queen. This hive very likely swarmed up. So what that means is I could end up with another 
another hive that has negative behavior genetics bad bad genetics um, bad meaning just too angry for me to work with if if there is no queen it's been fairly recent because there's still larvae so if she's gone the the eggs that she laid before she left are still developing lots and lots and lots of larvae I'm looking to see if I can see any eggs I do see some eggs that means within the last three days we've had a queen it takes three days after the time that the egg is laid for it to turn into larva but there's definitely not enough bees so I, I think that this hive swarmed up and left okay so that is a little disappointing I'm actually disappointed not in the bees but in me because what I did was I left this hive unattended and unexpected for too long and my fear that they would swarm up became a reality I'm quite certain that's what happened on this hive so at this point I have to reduce the size of this hive uh, so that this new queen can be raised and start doing her job and uh, get through the winter and then next spring I'll probably split this one to make more hives what I hope is that I can give this hive their honey on a second box and um, that way they will have enough food stores to get through this next period of building up the hive again without worrying too much about going out and getting it. They're probably still going to fly out anyway, but the bees that are here need to be able to eat so they can protect this hive. Hopefully the story on hive five is a little different. I, if I have two of them that swarmed up and left, well, I can't do anything about it, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna be extra disappointed. There's a lot more bees, come check, check this out. There's a lot more bees on this hive than there was on the other one, so there's still a chance that this one still has its queen. Look at all that honey. That's a good frame of honey right there. Okay, we're just going to see if there's any brood in this second box. Oh yeah. That's much, much nicer. But there are some queen cells. So either, either they're building a new queen or they're just being prepared. I can't see anything in there. No egg or larva in that queen cell, so they might just be building it just to get prepared. Maybe they sense that something's wrong, but the pattern of brood is still really good. Oh yeah, there's two queen cups, but they are empty. So this one is just building queen cups. Let's go look at another frame. The genetics in this one are still good. I mean, you, they're not as angry. I don't know if you can tell, but they're not out here trying to kill me just because I'm checking things out. Queen cups on the bottom. And I'm, I'm using the sun to my back to see inside the hive, inside the uh, cup. Four queen cups on the bottom, but there's nothing in them. Those are two bees that are getting ready to come out. Those are emerging bees. There's three of them actually. One, two, three. I am not worried about the queen. They appear to be doing okay. And the fact is, if, if they requeen themselves, I can't do a lot about it. That, that's nature taking care of itself and that's okay that's actually what we want but the problem the challenge here in South Texas and a lot of places in the south is that the genetics in the area when that when that new queen flies out and mates all of the drones which are the male bees that collect waiting for those virgin queens they are carrying genetics from hives all over the place and you don't know where they're coming from and they could very well have the Africanized genes or genetics that will then come back to your hive. It's a gamble, you don't know. Everybody's busy doing their job and everybody looks okay. I'm not gonna dig around too much. Um, hive five is uh, so far so good. Looks like she has a queen. Um, unlike hive four, which is probably queenless or a sick or dying queen. I'm gonna prepare a box to put on hive five that has several full frames of honey and several just drawn comb. They can continue to have space without having too much space. Hive six has, has displayed some angry behavior as well. 
I don't know if it's uh, Africanized or if it's just been a bad day in the past. So I just might make sure my, my smoker is going. I'm gonna try to insert a box below this one and then put this one on top of it, this, this evacuator, so that this box by tomorrow will be nearly empty. These guys are angry now just because I'm a clumsy beekeeper. I can't hear you. because I was just being clumsy. In my mind, all these hives were just full of honey. And they did have a lot of honey, but they also had a lot of empty space. And because of the beetle problem, empty space is a bad idea. So, once again, I leave the apiary open, I made the right decision. 